I bow to all the seekers of truth. <coughs> Today, as they say, is a Ghor Kali Yuga, and all sorts of horrible things we can see here, read in the newspapers. It's a fact that it's a very bad times we are passing. Also we find very low-graded people, we can call them of very low value system. But it was also predicted long, long time back <coughs> that at this time only the people who are seeking the truth, in the hills and days, Himalayas, all kinds of forgotten places will find the truth. It's already described by many, many great astrologers, also by saints. <coughs> so at this time we are placed in a very fortunate circumstances. I must say I have a great love for all the people who are in the IELTS and IPS and all civil services, because I know what, what one has to go through. It's a life of great turmoil and sacrifice also for the wife. But I always felt that this is like a soldier fighting in the war. We are here to build up this country. My husband was first in the foreign service. I had never heard of services and all that, so I said, now what's that for foreign services? But I said, I'm not going to go to any foreign country. Just now we have got freedom and we have to work here. We have to work out many things for this country. Not only that, but I realize that civil service is the spinal cord of this country. It has to bear all the brunt, all the troubles, all the burdens. At the same time, it has a great responsibility to build this country. And that's why I put my, I should say, all effort that my husband gets elected to IAS and somehow or other we lost a lot of money, everything, it's all right, I said. I can live with anything, but to live in the foreign countries and wasting your energy there, it's time now for us here to live. And I think this patriotism is the only thing by which we can live doing our civil service, understanding our responsibility and also that we are the mainstay of the government, of this country which is, though run by parties after parties. Life I learned where women have to be extremely forbearing, sacrificing and always very much keeping happy. It's a question of why are we here in this service? We are special people, no doubt. You have special powers, no doubt. But without misusing the powers, what are you? Nothing. If you misuse it, then it's not proper. And if you don't use it, you are powerless. 
This is really the situation. But the enjoyment and the happiness and the satisfaction comes from the fact that you are working for your country. So this patriotism which I imbibed from my parents also and also Mahatma Gandhi, I felt that we are duty-bound to work out in such a manner that we, every one of us, do something which is very constructive and which is very helpful. But at the same time, while doing that, because of such a difficult situations, we develop all kinds of problems. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. <coughs> the first thing is we see something, we react. This reaction can create two problems within us, one of conditioning or another of ego. Both are troublesome things and they make us very nervous and tense. The main thing is that the energy that is required for thinking, for futuristic planning, such yoga comes from a center which creates the energy for the brain cells which are used all the time. We go on taxing our brain, using its energy all the time, but we don't know how it is replaced and replaced by one center. This center is looking after so many organs that this overflow of energy to the brain for this futuristic life can create lots of problems, not only tension, but lots of other problems also, because this energy starts getting exhausted. And when we are in the struggle, this energy starts getting sort of finished or maybe we develop a tremendous imbalance within ourselves. As I don't know if they have put up the photograph of the Kundalini, yes, you can see here very clearly that our autonomous nervous system, nervous system is in three channels and either we can go to the right or to the left, but in the center we cannot go. Right and left, if you are too much futuristic, if you think too much, if you are working out too much, then this right side develops. And this is a very, very important thing to understand that we start losing the balance. The first thing that happens to a person like that, that he develops a very bad liver. His liver goes out of order because the center looks after the liver. Now, the heat of the liver, when it is created, starts rising. So, we might develop asthma very serious type of earth. And they say it's not incurable, but it is curable. If you can balance the person, it can be easily cured. This asthma, then if it doesn't happen, then this heat goes towards the heart. In childhood, if you are born with a bad heart or anything, then one can understand. But if there's a boy, say, 21, 22 years of age, who plays tennis and also drinks a lot and all that, he gets a fatal heart attack, very fatal, and he dies. But if it doesn't work out that way, gradually it starts moving towards a massive heart attack. It could be for anyone at any age, but especially as the old age starts, it can really show its results. So this is a common disease we have that our heart is in a trouble, then you'll try a pacemaker, this thing, that. Instead of that, if you take to Sahaja Yoga, you don't have to worry about your heart, it would be excellent. Then another thing that can happen to you, on the brain side, that if right side is too much, 
then our left side brain gets affected and we get paraplegia by which our hand can become absolutely dead, also leg can become dead. But can be a serious paralysis which can affect all the right side, right from the mouth to the head, all this area and also hands, legs, everything becomes paralyzed. So this is another thing which is awaiting such people who don't care for balancing themselves. So if they are all serious diseases, I should say, of the upper part of the body. In the lower part of the body, this heat passes towards the pancreas. So pancreas, you get diabetes, then it goes little lower and in the spleen you can get even blood cancer. So yoga has cured, definitely, blood cancer, can be cured. Then it can even affect the kidneys. Kidneys can be very badly affected and you might develop kidney troubles. You can try uh, transplantation but doesn't help much. Then it comes to your stomach where uh, you get constipated and always in anger, temper. All these type things happen to the right-sided person that he can't help it because he's so much busy with his planning and with everything that he, his brain has no rest and so he gets irritated when he sees something not according to his own desire or his own plans. With all these things happen, this right side problem I think is a very serious problem which all of us are facing. Now it comes, as I told you, from our reactions. So our reactions are because of our mind. Now if you have a mind that reacts, then how to stop this mind from reacting? Einstein has already told that when he was looking for the theory that he wanted to produce of relativity, he got so tired doing it, went into the garden, started playing with the soap bubbles and suddenly he says from somewhere unknown, the whole thing, the whole scientific explanation came into his mind, that he called as a torsion area. We all have that torsion area, the subtle energy that surrounds us, which looks after us. I call it the Divine Love that helps us in every way to balance ourselves, to enrich ourselves and to give the absolute knowledge, not relative knowledge but absolute knowledge. So this is the jnana marga we are talking about, of the absolute knowledge. Now this torsion area is a wonderful thing because this Kundalini, when she rises, she not only nourishes all the six centers, enlightens them and integrates them, but also connects you to this torsion area of Einstein. Suddenly you are amazed at yourself how it has happened that you get so many solutions of problems which are not solved. Your temperament changes, you are so relaxed. That means you develop that witness state because now you go beyond your mind. You don't react, you see. You just see, watch and it's surprisingly your attention becomes extremely powerful. You have all these things within you. Just think that we have to have, say, some light. It has to be connected. I am speaking here, this instrument has to be connected to the mains, otherwise it is useless. In the same way, we are to be connected. We have to decide that we should be connected to that Divine Power. Once you are connected to that Divine Power, if such a change takes place, First of all, your 
hands start speaking. It is written in the Qur'an that at the time of resurrection, Kiyama, your hands will speak. So I say I will only accept Muslims whose hands are speaking. Means on your hands, on these five fingers, here and here, seven places, you can feel your centers. Then you can feel the centers of other, because you become a collective being. Who is the other? You can feel everyone on your fingertips. A person may look all right, normal to you, but you realize, no, no, he's not. Something very serious about that person. On the fingertips you can feel it, what's wrong with that person. Now if you somehow or other master the art, at the most you take one month. If you do it, you can raise others' kundalini. That's how, as they say, the Sahaja Yoga has spread in eighty-six countries. It has spread, no doubt, it has spread in eighty-six countries, but I have not been to all these countries, I have not visited all these countries. I might have gone to about, say, twenty countries at the most. But people who got Realization in these countries, they went down to these places and gave Realizations to others. Now imagine a country called Benin in Africa has got seven thousand Sajogis, they were all Muslims and they all have got Realization. That doesn't mean that you are no more a Muslim or a Hindu, you are that, but you know the essence of it. So you respect every religion, you respect all the incarnations because now you have the true knowledge about religion, about yourself and about the whole universe. You can feel it on your fingertips, for example. Supposing a man comes, I would say that once uh, when my husband was a city magistrate, two ladies came to me from the back door and they said, see now these Buddhist people are putting us into trouble, we are good women, we have done nothing. I just felt their vibration. I told my husband that I think you people are doing some injustice to them, they are quite honest. They said, don't interfere. I said, I'm not interfering, but I'll prove it to you that these girls are innocent and simple girls and unnecessarily you people are thinking that they are bad women. So I went with them. That time, of course, we had only one car, so I went by rickshaw with them. To that place where the man had written that they are bad girls. So I went and asked him, are these the two girls who are living in your high, uh, you know, high upper flat? Are these the girls who did like this? He said, not at all, these are very different, not these. Then I came and told him, see, I judge them from vibrations and they cannot be bad girls. So sometimes also we punish people, we get angry with people who do not deserve that kind of a treatment because we don't know what they are. We also follow wrong paths, we go, we get lost into so many things because we don't know what is the right path. Now with this happening of the Kundalini, of course physically you are all right. Physically your problems are solved. Physically you don't have to bother. Actually it's hardly any uh, trouble to cure people physically. We also have a hospital where they don't charge them anything except for the room where they have to live and very good rooms also sometimes. The doctors also work free and work it out so well that so many people have been cured. We are getting people from all over the world, very highly placed people come there and they are getting cured. Now for that you don't have to go to the whole rigmarole of uh, feeling what's wrong with them, putting them for diagnosis. In the diagnosis only the patient dies halfway. But this is only on the fingertips you know what's wrong with the person. You need not tell that person what's wrong. You know how to cure it and how to work it out. Today only a friend of ours came to see me, much younger to me, looking so very old and haggard and he said, I've got paralysis. I said, oh. He was another one of the same kind, working too hard, too hard. And within, I said, uh, twenty minutes or so after raising his Kundalini, his face became all right, his hands became all right and he said, how, 
I can't walk without a stick. I said, all right, now you walk. We started walking. I've seen people running who come on wheelchairs. It's very surprising. But for this we must know this is the knowledge of our country. Not that others didn't know, they knew. But what in Bolivia, I was surprised Bolivia is so far out. People told me, we know all about chakras, we know everything, but we don't know how to raise the Kundalini. And they knew the word Kundalini also. So I thought, I must find out who has told you all this. Two saints came from India long, long time back. Maybe I thought Machinder Nath and Goraknath had gone everywhere. They went to Ukraine also, so they might have told them about this Kundalini and the awakening of the Kundalini. But they said, we don't know how to raise the Kundalini. Once you are entitled uh, as a surgeon, you can raise the Kundalini of any person, you can cure any person, you can do whatever you want to do as far as the physical side is concerned. Even the mental side. I've seen the attention is more a mental side of human beings, where you get very tensed up, get very angry, annoyed, or you become extremely quiet and you don't know how to handle the situation. This also is the same reaction of your mind that works it out. But if you go beyond the mind, then you will be amazed the ideas that they come to are absolutely The solutions that come to you are absolutely perfect and the people who are against you also become your friends. Those who are troubling you very much also become very, very sweet. It's a changing and transforming of human beings. The other day I had a newspaper gentleman. And his name was Mr. Abbas, all right. So he was extremely aggressive with me. He asked me funny questions. He said, How did you know that you are divine? I said, How did you know that you were a human being? He looked at me. I said, See, because I would not react. I used to watch, I used to see. Then I found out I am different from others. So I, I didn't try to show off this thing. There's nobody wants to. Uh, understand it that way. You have to prove it. That's the best way Sahaja Yoga can be told. So he said, but how can I get the proof? He said, I don't believe in any fundamentalism. All right, don't believe in any fundamentalism. Do you believe in yourself? Yes, yes, of course. And at that moment his Kundalini rise. So he said, what's happening? What is how this cool breeze is flowing into my fingertips, how is it? I said, also it out of your fortunate body. And he was completely chill. He said, whatever I've asked you the question, I'm not going to put it up, it's all nonsense. Hum uh, the Now I have become a sensible man. You see, actually this Kundalini changes, really transforms him. Now they say, we have six enemies. Kama, Krodha, Madha, Matsara, Loha, Moha. Only six that side, but nowadays I think there are more. But as it is accepted, there are six of them. So once you get connected with this divine power of love, all these things just drop out. They are useless. No jealousies, no competition, nothing. We have many people also in the foreign service. And they told us that people are very happy with us, Mother. I said, why? Because we are not competitive. They are all becoming ambassadors, this, that. But nobody is angry with us because we are not competitive. When the mind starts thinking of competition, you see, you can go into any wrong alley, into any dark alley, you can really can be very much a different person. But with this, you are in the center. You have a complete balance within yourself and all the hankering, everything drops out. You don't hanker after things. You don't hanker after people. You don't hanker after great uh, publicity or anything. You just automatically 
become so balanced and you are not bothered as to what's happening uh, and that you are not frightened. For example, if you are standing in the water, you are afraid of the waves, all right? But suppose you get into the boat, then you can even enjoy the waves. But supposing you learn how to swim, you can jump down and you can sail. This is how Sahaja Yoga works in a simple manner. As I've said that I have tremendous concern for you people, always had, but because of my husband's strict rules, I could not touch his office people, I could not talk to them, I could not meet anyone who was even a pew, the Valunda IAS officer. He was very strict about it. I said, all right, I'll try some other area. But now he has retired, luckily. Now I am free even to talk to you, surprisingly. Otherwise he would never allow me to talk to you people because he thought it's not proper. We must maintain, you must maintain a certain distance. So even in the parties and arts, all these places, I was quite amused the way people used to discuss and uh, talk about things, you know, and I used to keep quiet. So they thought, I don't even know English or maybe I'm so quiet because perhaps maybe I'm good for nothing, possible. But now all the same persons, those same ladies and gentlemen are now doing meditation. Now for meditation you don't have to hang yourself with anything, you don't have to have too much time, even ten minutes before sleeping you do meditation, you'll feel so relaxed and so very absolutely completely cleared out of your problems, cleared out of your thinking, just relax. There's no thinking which is thoughtless awareness. Has been already told to us by a Jung. You know Jung who was a disciple of Freud, whom he revolted against and he talked about the mother energy. We Indians, you see, are Shakti Pujaris. Now there's this school, there is Navratras are going on. But we have never understood the message of mother's love. It is the mother's love that works, I think. And you also become very motherly, very kind, very compassionate. How can a human being, I don't know, how can he be cruel to anyone who is suffering, who is in trouble, who is in poverty, the love that you have within yourself starts flowing just like an ocean and you become extremely generous and all the generous people I have seen are very much always looked after. I'll give an example of my father who was a very generous man, very, very generous. And once what happened, he always used to say, never close the houses, we should not close our house, always open the windows, open the doors. He said, some thi if you tell him, the thieves might come, he said, let them come. After all, they need something, madam. that's why they are coming. So he used to keep all the doors open. He had a big, he was fond of music, so he had a big gramophone with a one, big horn-like thing. And one day one thief came, opened the door, it was open, door was open only, he took away that gramophone. So next day he was sitting very seriously. So my mother said, now are you sorry for that? No, 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 that I can buy. But I'm only sorry, this man seems to be a conniser of music, he's taken away the gramophone. Now what will he play? He has not taken any records. So my mother said, all right, you advertise in the newspaper. The one who has taken the gramophone should please come and take the records so that he enjoys the gramophone. I mean, I have seen such people, I have seen really very generous people. And at the time when Gandhiji declared the war of independence, they not only went to jail, but they gave away everything that they had. We used to live in huge big houses, then we shifted to some sort of uh, huts and things. We were enjoying it because, you see, the enjoyment was of our Rashtra Bhakti. And this has helped 
That time Mahatma Gandhi was helped because that time the people were like that. Now today the thing is, it's coming from the West, too much of this, too much of that. It's all right, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong. It should come, we should prosper, our country should pro prosper, we should create more things, I agree there. But this hankering will go away. Now the hankering becomes the other way now. Like, what should I give to this lady? Now, what should I do for this gentleman? I mean, the worry goes to the other side of it. He, what to do? What should I give that they won't feel right? Because sometimes, you know, Sarkari Nokar, as they are very strict. So if you give them that thing, I'm giving them a bribe. I said, it's not a bribe. I'm just giving because I want to give you. So will you take it? With very great difficulty they'll take. But you see, is a way of expression of your love. And with this love, I tell you, you will be so very popular, so very popular in your office, in your work, in the whole of the country, people will remember it, that this was the man who really looked after us, who has done so much for us. If you don't have a concern, you will be just worried about yourself and this thing. All the ladies also of the eyes, thank you very much for inviting me, but I would like to tell you that ladies have to help the husband. They should try to understand that their energy is the Shakti's energy and they should give to men this energy so that they can work better. But sometimes I have funny experiences which I will relate to you, which was very interesting. That first time, first of all, I, I never know your seniority, juniority, anything, I don't know much of it, I don't understand. I came to Delhi, I mean, my husband came here to work for Shastri. So we met in a party, a friend of mine who was from my college. So she asked me, Are, how are you here, Nirma? I said, my husband has come here. I said, what is he doing? I said, he is a government servant. Everybody is a government servant here. But what is he doing? I said, I don't know that, but he's something here. Where do you live? First thing she asked. Me. I said, I live in Minaba. Ah, Minaba. What is your husband doing? You could have got a much better husband. Why did you marry a man who takes you to Minaba? Baba, I didn't know Minaba was that much. You see, because Shastriji, you see, asked us to come here and there was, there was no house, so they gave us Minaba. I, I thought this was very bad to live in Minaba the way she was talking. Then she said, All right, this gentleman who is coming, this tall gentleman, you know, he's very, very important. You somehow or other manage to talk to him, he'll get your husband a very good job and you'll get a very good house. And who comes there was my husband. <laughs> oh my God. She said, You know him? I said, Yes. How? He's my husband. After that, she didn't. She never said it to me. To know that they live in Minaba, the bad thing itself, is a quite a big knowledge about things, isn't it? That only people of this much pay live in Minaba, they live in I mean, It's really impossible. Even, I mean, don't know, a state officer knows this much, but the lady knew that Minaba was not meant for an IAS officer. Can you imagine? So these indulgences of the women is of no use. I'm very happy to hear about this organization, that it is doing such a good constructive work. I was really very happy. I myself, uh, he says I am a socialist because I always think of the social problems. I, some or other, I am a socialist, all right, because it's a collective sense. And when I heard that these people are doing this kind of work, I said, amazing! I can't imagine those days women used to talk of something else, they would never talk of any social. It was so difficult to make them understand social. Funny type of uh, atmosphere was there. The Britishers had let, left their legacy on our heads and uh, we were quite enamored by them. Uh, for example, I would say that it was not for them to conceive 
of something higher or better. So I was the president of the blind, uh, so, so the friends of the blind society, and uh, for that they were going to have a program, and these blind were going to act, and the governor, Mr. Cherian, was to come. When he came, they wanted to know who will be sitting next to him. Being a chairman, of course, they would ask me to sit down. The rest started quarreling and fighting and discussing so much, I got such a fright. I thought, now take to humor, that's the best way to solve the problem. So I said, all right, we'll get a big plank on top of the governor's head and you all sit like sparrows on that. Immediately all their anger vanished and they became all right. So what I'm saying is that now the quality of women have changed. You can see that very clearly, the quality has changed. And though uh, you might think that they are rather self-centered or whatever you may think, but one thing I've noticed that they are social-minded. They read, they understand what's going on in this country. I would say these days our country is a very big term very bitter. And all these things are going to help us to solve this problem, so many problems we can solve. Once some of these problems are solved, I'm sure we'll be one of the greatest countries. We have no dearth of talent, no dearth. We have no dirt of heart. Only you just kastatra dulava means there's no one. It's difficult to get a person who can put them to the yojana. And if such a person gets his self realization, he's so self confident, so peaceful within himself, he is not bothered as to what others are doing. And all this can change, transform you into a beautiful personality. You give up all your destructive habits, absolutely. You just give up your destructive habits. I don't have to say, give up, I never say. If I say that, half of people might leave me. But I've seen people overnight. In London, there were twelve people who had come who were taking drugs, they were drug addicts. They left their drugs overnight, overnight. Can you imagine? I was amazed. How could they leave it overnight? Our problems of drugs, of all other things, we can solve them without any difficulty and you are placed, you are placed for that, for that kind of a job. Your situation is very good because you have a responsibility, very great responsibility and that responsibility has to be understood. If we do not understand our responsibility, we will not. But once you get your realization, you will, you will become extremely responsible, and also you will not feel that responsibility on your head. You will feel extremely, absolutely relaxed. And such a person to meet, you are sometimes surprised. The face changes, the body changes, everything, the transformation takes place, and you are surprised. All this, all this is within you. All this you have got it. All this is working out. The only thing we have to get our self knowledge. This is a knowledge of our inner being, a very subtle knowledge. I pray and thank you very much, all the ladies also, for calling me here. This is a very unique experience I have because I have never known that IS people could be so receptive to this kind of a subtle thing. But they are. In Bombay I was surprised when I had this program in Bombay, now they are regularly going for meditation in a hall that they have. Surprise! How can they do it? I don't know. But they are too. The way they have received me, actually I used to always say that the Bombay IS people are very very proud, I should say, very proud. They wouldn't look at you, they wouldn't see you. 
But I was surprised I become so humble, so nice. I don't know why in Bombay they had developed this kind of a superiority complex or something. We had very bad reports about them. But suddenly they have changed so much and in the same way you all should change. And you become so collective. It's not joint, it's collective. And you just think of helping each other and living that kind of a life. And all over the world we have brothers and sisters. Wherever you go, you may go anywhere, you'll find them waiting for you. They also come here. When they come here, they touch this motherland of ours. They touch this Bharat Bhumi with their lips and kiss it. I say, why do you do it? Because it's a yoga bhumi. It's a special country. It's a yoga bhumi. Here we have got our realization. And you'll be amazed that this country is a yoga bhumi. Once I was traveling with my husband in the plane, and I told him, we have reached India. He said, how do you know? I see the vibrations all over, you can see. So he went to the pilot to verify, as usual, to verify what I was saying was correct or not. The pilot said, sir, we have, we have. I said, see, this is our son, this has spirituality. Everything that is written, we have to verify. Why some places are swambhus? How can you make it out? Anywhere you go, there's a temple, there's a temple, how do? You can feel it on your fingertips. Now you'll be surprised to know that Makkah has got a big stone, black stone. Muhammad Sahib said, don't worship any stone because people used to make money out of making some statues and all. But this stone, he said, you should go round. That is the biggest thing for Muslim to go round the stone. Now ask them, why do you go and worship the stone? They don't know. I know. Because in our Shastras is written that it's a Makkeshwara Shiv. It is a Shiv called in vibrations. I say the vibration starts from it. It's a Makkeshwara Shiv. It's a Shiva in the stone. It's the vibrations of the Shiva. And it's a fact. The other day I read a very nice article in Marathi that the Shiva was worshipped before Islamic religion came, but the way they were doing it, because they were going to all kinds of temples and rituals, too many rituals, and because of that ritualism, Muhammad Sahib said, don't worship the stone. But we have swambhus, we have really swambhus. But when you will go and verify with your vibration, you will know their service. You all are capable of getting self knowledge all of you. Whatever must be your past and not. We have to be in the present. Past is finished, future doesn't exist. You will be in the present and that's the reality, which you all can feel the vibrations. <laughs> to bother him all his life. So one should not have any such ideas that I've done this wrong, how can I get realization? This is unnecessary. You should not, you should never, never think that you are guilty. If you were, you would, you would have been in the jail, you would not have been here. So don't think you are guilty. Don't judge yourself. You don't know yourself. It is to know yourself you have to do this. And don't judge. You must have great respect and love for this. And I'm sure it will work out tonight as desired by these people. But those who don't want to have self realization, I would say they can go. Because I don't want them to disturb others. Supposing if you don't want, it cannot be forced, it has to be asked for. You cannot force it onto anyone, you cannot pay for it, you cannot do anything about it. But if the Kundalini doesn't rise, it's all right. We'll have a center where you can go and get it corrected, maybe something wrong in the chakras which you do not know, and they will find out. So it will take hardly any time, hardly any time. Have faith in yourself. First of all, have faith in yourself. 
and this will work. First, I think to forgive others is difficult. The, you see, the Western people, they cannot forgive themselves. And for Indians, the other way now. They cannot forgive others, you see. I don't know why there is this kind of a uh, different, I mean, attitude. But we should forgive ourselves also. God has created you as human being, not to be ruined like this, not to be shattered like this, but to achieve your glory. You have to just put your hands towards me like this. I think if you have shoes, you have to take it out. Helps us a lot. We are sitting in Delhi, we are here in this Bharat Bhumi, in this Yoga Bhumi. It works very fast. In this country, it works very fast. And also with you people, because you love this country very much, you work so hard for this country. So it works very fast. So don't have any apprehensions. Of, just put your both the hands like this. Again, I would request you must forgive yourself and others. That's very important because if you don't do that, then your center here, we call the Vishuddhi chakra, will be blocked. I mean, the guilty part is you will block, and if you don't forgive, then this Adya chakra will be blocked. Please put your hands like this, a little lower. Now. First we'll start feeling some cool or hot breeze on your fingertips and also on your thumb. Then in the palm you start feeling a cool or a hot breeze. Some people start thinking that this air conditioning, you know, it has nothing to do with air conditioning. So please have faith in yourself. Now, please put right hand towards me and put down, put your, put down your head a little and feel with your left hand on top of your fontanel bone area, which was called as talu. If there's a cool or a hot breeze coming out, now please put down your heads a little and see for yourself. Move your hand. It might be coming very far, maybe very close, but don't put your hand on top, but above. Just move, please, move it on the sides and see for yourself that it's a cool or a hot breeze like coming. It is hot means you have not forgiven. It means only that you have to really say, I forgive. You have to, don't have to do anything except you have to say in your heart, I forgive everyone. That's a very great quality. Hmm. Now please put your left hand towards me and see with your right hand, again bend your head please, 
and see for yourself if there's a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your head. Just see for yourself. Please put your right hand again. Right hand is more. So put the right hand like this and see for yourself. Now again put both the hands towards me and don't think, just, just don't think. You can stop thinking even for a second, that's very good. This is called as nirvicharita. Then comes a stage, you become nirvikalpa, when there is no doubt in your head, you become into doubtless awareness, where you show sure you've got it, you're sure you can do everything. That is the stage one has to rise. Now all those who have felt on their fingertips a cool or a hot breeze or out of the fontanelle bone area, cool or a hot breeze, please raise both your hands. Most of you have got it. Most of you have got it. Congratulations. And those who haven't got it will also get it. If you have to just a little bit join one of the centers that we have, or if you want, any one of them can come and give you realization. I, I don't think there is any hindrance in that, but sometimes it happens that she doesn't rise. She is your mother, individual mother. She doesn't have any other child. This Kundalini knows everything about you. She knows your aspirations, she knows your past, she knows everything. Also she knows what physical problems you are. She's very kind. As your mother, when she gave you the birth, she took up all the labor pains upon herself. It is the Kundalini that out of her love, that motherly love, she does everything and then it just works. It works because that's what you are in for. The time has come for all of us to be transformed, to get into a new generation of beautiful people. It's a wonderful time. If I've done anything so far, is this that I found out a way for collective awakening. That's the only work I've done. Otherwise it was already there, Nath Pantis used to do it, it was quite a well-known thing among people. But what I've done is I have tried to find out what are the permutations and combinations of problems in the human beings and why should they all get it. This collective happening has been a great blessing all over the world. Again, I would like to thank you very much. Very kind of you that you had invited me here. If you have any questions also, if you can spare some time, I would like to know if you have any questions. Have a certain posture for meditation? A loudspeaker, a point at. A loudspeaker. Mataji, do you have to have a certain posture for meditation? Or you can meditate anywhere? 
मेडिटेशन के लिए कोई पॉस्चर चाहिए मेडिटेशन के लिए कोई एनी स्पेसिफिक पोस्चर एनी स्पेसिफिक पोस्चर फॉर मेडिटेशन एनी पोस्चर बसा पद्धत है कई स्पेसिफिक मेथड है का बसा नहीं बसा पद्धत नो दस नथिंग दस नो स्टाइल दस नथिंग यू कैन सिट विच एवर वे यू लाइक यू कैन सिट ऑन द चेयर यू कैन डू आई मीन दस नो स्टाइल नथिंग आई डिंट अंडरस्टैंड योर क्वेश्चन व्हाट यू आर सेइंग सो आई वाज आस्किंग यू मैन हाउ दस नथिंग लाइक यू सी यू आर बियॉन्ड ऑल दिस थिंग्स नाउ डोंट हैव टू वरी एज टू हाउ यू सिट डाउन व्हाट यू डू नथिंग ऑफ दैट You sit any way you like. If you want, you can sit on the ground. If you want, you can sit on the chair. Any way. This, it's all over. Sprashta samadhan. It understand our question. Maaf, me. Sawali nahi samajh mein aa raha tha. Ha. Ye to koi problem hi nahi. Ab nirband hai. Ab samajhe nirband hai. मस्तू है फिर क्या बोले है ना this uh, just they will see your character your style and they'll be so impressed by uska wo loud speaker ki kya kya kar raha hai atan ki prashna very positive questions the very very positive because once you get it you want others to get it too because you find others are in trouble this uh, we have one gentleman here who wants to sing a song for you i hope you'll enjoy it. and i think song will soothe it down with the permission of mata ji i'll make an announcement बाद में गाना और पहला हमें नहीं चाहिए म्यूजिशियन हुए नो गुरु लर्न एनी म्यूजिक समर अदर आफ्टर सर जो का he developed the art of music from within people become poets they all kinds of things happen he is one of them who has achieved a great success in music without going to any guru without learning anything abc's or not that and the other center is in saptajan and play those who want to have further information and want to develop themselves 
I suggest they can go to some center, 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 uh, center yeah, first. Center. Or they, if they so wish, they can go to Nichishri. Nichishri area behind Kota, on Sundays. Why
ये करम नहीं तो 